presentation. Now, our next presentation is by Lisa Kellogg and Harshal Shah, who are talking to AI for species identification in recreational fisheries management. Welcome, Lisa and Harshal. Uh, Hello, my name is Lisa Kellogg, and I'm a researcher at the Virginia Institute of Marine Science. Thank you for joining me and my colleague Harshil Shah from DX Factor to learn more about our RecFish project. The mission of the RecFish project is to develop a free, useful, accurate, and user-friendly fishing app that encourages recreational anglers to collect and contribute catch data to improve fishery science and support sustainable fisheries management. The RecFish team consists of several researchers from the Virginia Institute of Marine Science, a member of the VIMS Innovation Fund Working Group, and staff from DX Factor. In developing RecFish, we're using what we think of as the eBird model for engaging community scientists. The eBird effort provided services valued by birders and then asked them to contribute their data. They help birders with things like identifying their birds, finding species of interest, and keeping a life list. The eBird database recently reached 1 billion bird observations contributed. Using a similar approach, we hope to engage recreational anglers in Chesapeake Bay as community scientists. Chesapeake Bay is ideal for this project because of the diversity of species found there. Right now, we are attempting to model 281 fish species found in the bay. Once we've proven the concept in Chesapeake Bay, we hope to expand up and down the Atlantic coast of the US and then eventually around the world. Once fully developed, the RecFish app will include eight core features. First and foremost, the app will allow anglers to accurately identify their catch. The species name given will be the preferred common name of the American Fisheries Society, and we will also provide the confidence of the model in that species identification. The fish length will also be measured automatically, and an approximate weight will be given based on link to biomass relationships. Using information on the species identity, the length of the fish, the location of the catch, and the date, we will instantly provide anglers with information on whether their catch is legal to keep or whether they must put it back in the water. We will also provide information based on local health department fish consumption advisories on whether their catch is safe to eat. Anglers will have the option to stamp information about the species identity, the length and weight of the fish on a photograph of the fish. They will also have the inf information recorded in a logbook that provides them the opportunity to add additional information of interest to them. Finally, recreational anglers will be able to upload information on each fish they catch to our database with the touch of a button. To identify species, RecFish is using a two-step process. The first step in the process is object detection. To find the fish in a photo, we are using the FASTER region-based convolutional neural network model. This model places a bounding box around the fish in an image and then removes the background. The second step in the process is species identification. To identify the species, we are training multiple convolutional neural networks that have different architectures to identify our species. At present, we're using the Inception ResNet version 2 and Efficient Net B5 models. These convolutional neural networks are then combined into an ensemble model that provides the final fish identification. In addition to identifying the species of the fish caught, the RecFish app will also measure each fish. It will do this by implementing augmented reality functionality, specifically Google's AR core technology that is available for both iOS and Android. This allows measurement of the fish without an object of known size in the image. We will also make sure that the length measurement is appropriate for the species identified. In some cases, this will be total length, but in other cases, it will be fork or standard length. 
So far, we've been successful in modeling 60 different species of fish from Chesapeake Bay with a mean accuracy of over 95%. We've also developed a website for anglers to upload photos to help with model training. This summer, we will also be releasing a photo upload app. We anticipate that this app will increase the rate at which anglers upload photos to the RecFish database to help with model training. Right now, we're continuing to focus on modeling additional species of fish and on developing other core app features. Recently, we've proposed adding two new functions to the RecFish app. The first function that we would like to add is an invasive species alerting and reporting function. Once integrated, this would alert recreational anglers each time they catch an invasive species and would tell them what to do with the fish that they've caught. It would also offer them the opportunity to report their catch to the appropriate management agency with the touch of a single button. The second feature that we would like to add to the RecFish app is one that provides infrastructure for other researchers to incorporate recreational anglers as community scientists into their own research project. What we have in mind is creating QR codes for individual projects, providing those codes to the researchers who in turn provide the code to the recreational angler. The anglers would then include the QR code in all photos they take of fish for that project. Our models would be trained to detect photos that include QR codes and send them to the appropriate researchers. The primary challenges that we're facing at present are finding enough photos of rare or rarely photographed species and in developing a viable long-term funding model. With that, I would like to thank you for taking the time to learn more about our RecFish project. I would also like to thank the groups that have provided funding and support for the RecFish project. And most importantly, I would like to thank the recreational anglers without whom this project would not be possible. Thank you very much, Lisa. Seems like recreational fisheries are offering us a rich environment to, to develop AI systems. Um, alongside the work that you're doing, we're just hearing a lot in Europe about the Dutch angling app Main Fistmark, which was only launched in 2020, has already had over 100,000 images added and is getting about 500 records a day coming in. So these are the kind of groups we'd like to link up. Peter Bielen from the Sports Fisheray Nederland would be a good link with your team. And hopefully we can use these teams to help push forward. And as there's a whole conversation there about how to get the size and the linking with QR codes or other. But my question to you is, do you see the funds available for this kind of uh, development from wealthy, wealthier recreational fishery joining with the funds from commercial fisheries where they have common aims and what other mutually beneficial beneficial opportunities do you think we can we can leverage by you know bringing in the the recreational fishers to understand the overall stock health thank you thank you for the question um i really think that there's a huge uh, potential within the recreational angler community I mean, the experiences that we've had with recreational anglers, they are incredibly enthusiastic and they're helping us through every phase of this. They're serving as beta testers. They're making sure that things are easy to use before we put them out at a larger scale. And so I really think there's a, a lot of desire within the recreational community to actually contribute and give back. And so I think, you know, the potential there is huge. And I think, you know, with the RecFish app that we're developing, we're trying to make it as adaptable and scalable as possible. And I, I really don't think it would take much to adapt it to some small vessel fishery applications in, in places where there's not much existing data. Questions coming your way. Two questions coming your way. One from uh, another Dutchman up in the north there of, of the screen, El Anton Ellenbrook, but also Matt. Matt, would you like to go first? Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Lisa, for a really great presentation there. Um, I was just interested if you had any plans to um, gamify the, 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 the projects at all. I know there's been some success with, you know, kind of the 
top trumps of of collecting data uh, and and that also relates to where are the images stored does the does does a contributing person using the the interface still have access to their pictures i mean is there a, like a record for them as well with the log and they still can see the pictures or you know what what, what's your long-term plans to incentivize it, I suppose, for, for, for um, users? Well, and we're still, we're still working on that. We're, we're quite early in the project. Um, and so we certainly have considered gamification. Um, we haven't gotten there yet, to be honest. Um, you know, we've thought about, you know, doing some things like fish quizzes and let people, you know, help us with the identification by giving us what they think the the fish ID is to sort of streamline and, and um, make our QAQC more efficient um, and, and sort of give us some free labor on that front. Um, and I'm sorry, what was the second part of your question? It, it was really about gamification. I was wondering if you, know, you could uh, uh, try and involve sort of, you know, recreational compliance or, or win something for, you know, being a good recreational angler or, do you know what I mean? I, I, it was really about gamification, and uh, we've spoken a lot over the past few days about incentivizing uh, the reasons why stakeholders will use these technologies. You know, there's there's a lot of uh, uh, of cases where we've seen the technologies is being developed and it's excellent, but the actual use case on the ground is, for me, a really critical question to to look at. Uh, before you, the, in my opinion, before you even start developing the technology. Yes, and we're, you know, we're working on that and we're, we're literally testing it out with the recreational anglers to see what, what attracts them to using it and, and paying a lot of attention to that and working with recreational anglers. To be honest, the group that we're working with right now is so eager that we, we really don't have to incentivize them. They, they just want to contribute and be a part of it because for years, they've been frustrated that they couldn't provide more data to manage the fish that, that they target. And they, they get sort of frustrated by some of the management actions that are at a sort of broader scale than what they're actually seeing in their local fishing spots. And so offering them the opportunity to actually record data that's going to be considered a valid data at the end of the day, I think is something that's actually very attractive to a lot of recreational anglers in the US. Thanks, Lisa. Um, it's amazing what a young angler will do to get one of those uh, hats from one of the fishing companies. But uh, Anton, <laughs> your turn. No, no, my question was basically the, the part that um, you forgot about uh, Matt's first question. So long-term storage and how can other people uh, use data from other anglers if they uh, either as a scientist want to develop a new model or want to access just the data for a reason? How do they get access to this then fantastic big data set? Well, we, we're still working on creating that data set. So um, the, the back end, we're um, right now it's just it's just Azure storage in the cloud and we haven't built the back end of the app yet because we don't have a fully functional app yet. But one thing that we are doing as with with this upload app, Anglers have the choice to upload their photos either for rec fish use only, for research only, or to make it no rights reserved. And so those, the no rights reserved photos, we can make publicly available to anyone who wants them. The, the research only, we're requiring a data sharing agreement that you agree not to share those publicly and only use them for research, or they can choose to just have them held privately by rec fish and no one else ever sees them. Thank you very much, Lisa. And, uh... These are the kind of standards that uh, you know people will start to settle on. What what are the terms and so on? Thank you, Harshal, for joining in the background there.